In this video, I'm going to walk you through electrical design. I'm not going to show you the details of drawing individual objects because you already know how to do that. Instead, I'm going to show you what I designed and explain a few things regarding code and design theory. On my screen is my home design with the electrical plan nearly complete. I'll start in the kitchen to show you what I have. First, I consider the code that governs placement of receptacles. In the kitchen, a receptacle must be within 24 inches of a cabinet end and no more than 48 inches apart. The kitchen in this design is so small that it's easy to achieve. Also, kitchen receptacles must be GFCI or ground fault circuit interrupting. I have not placed mine yet because I just haven't gotten that far. But I will place one about here and one about here. And probably one over here over the dishwasher as well. As you see, too, I'm using universally acceptable representations such as the S with the slash running through for a switch. Looks like a dollar sign, which is exactly what happens when you turn these things on. They use up your dollars. If you have double switches in the same wall plate, you simply represent that with two of the same symbols side by side. Over on the wall with my sink, I'm installing under cabinet strip lights. I made this symbol up myself with a rectangle with circles uh, that I trimmed out. For things like this, it's okay to make up a symbol because there is no code or specifications writing on it. Also, there is a wire that I drew to indicate the switch that will control the light fixture. This is important. I drew my wires by creating a separate layer called wiring and used dashed red lines, which is universally re required for representing electrical wire. Over my pantry is a ceiling mounted pull chain light. It will not be connected to a switch with wire because the switch is built in. The emblem used is a circle with four extensions in all directions and marked by the letters P, C on the lower right side. Behind my range is the receptacle with its proper marking. Mounted on the ceiling in the kitchen is a fluorescent light fixture that is represented by a rectangle with a slash drawn through and a red dashed line connecting it to the switch that will control it. In my bathroom, I have an exhaust fan represented by this tornado looking symbol and a ceiling mounted light fixture controlled by this switch on the wall. I have not placed my receptacle yet, but must do so within 36 inches of the sink. It too must be a GFCI because it is, at it is near water. In my living slash dining room, uh, there are two fans with light fixtures attached. On the wall by the door, I have a duplex switch indicated by uh, two S symbols, but with the subscript 3 indicating that it's a three-way switch. The reason for the three-way is so I can control power to these fans by the front entry door and outside the door of the master bedroom. My wire runs from the door switch through both fans and then to the switch by the master bedroom. Ceiling fans typically have their own pull chains to control lighting and fan speed. There is no code governing the placement of wall switches, but a good rule of thumb is to place them within a foot of the doorway so occupants do not have to walk through a dark room fumbling for a light switch. Looking around my living area, you'll see my receptacles placed within 6 feet of any obstruction and no more than 12 feet apart. Always measure your distances to make sure you stay within this code. The reason for this code is to keep occupants from stretching extension cords everywhere, which is a fire hazard. The circles with one line extending to the wall are called wall sconces, basically wall lights. They have their own switches, so I don't need to draw wire anywhere. In my master bedroom, on one wall, I've placed two quad receptacles because my entertainment center will go here and require lots of electrical connections for TVs, VCRs, DVD players, stereos, and game consoles. On the opposite wall are two receptacles and two wall sconces on both sides of where the king size bed will go. This will allow the occupants to plug in cell phones, tablets, essential oils, diffusers, vaporizers, or whatever one might need or want while lying in bed. The sconces will allow occupants to read traditional paper books and magazines as well as uh, providing a softer light source. In the smaller bedroom, I have a fan. 
a sconce above where a twin bed will be placed, and receptacles for plugging in phones and whatever else you have. I also have a quad receptacle on the opposite wall for any TVs or stereos or anything that might be placed in that room. On the outside of the house, I have a sconce by the front door that is controlled by a switch just inside the door and three security floodlights, one controlled by the switch near the side door and the other two by a switch by the front door. Overall, as you place your electricals, think about what the occupants will need and desire based off your own needs and desires. Have you ever needed to plug in something and not have a receptacle close enough? Or maybe you have a dark corner that you wish had been lit more adequately. Observe your friends and relatives' homes to see where electricals are placed. That's where all designers get their ideas. They make them their own by modifying and adding to them.